Now, I wanted to show you a little bit what is Varshalata. Because some of you have not seen it personally. That's why Aradhya Prabhu, Temple President of Varshana, Vindavanita, <coughs> and and uh, Gonitai, uh, to give you a little insight. Varshana has a planetarium. That's the centerpiece, which is a little bit like in Peru. <coughs> kind of a tur tur turtoise <laughs> and then it is surrounded by another ten and because of that and all the art which is being conducted there it is actually very monumental and it has taken us a lot of time and it will take us much more time to really finish it because it's it's like an art exhibit without end plus we have in Varshana 22 caves natural caves which are very beautiful wrapped into the wrapped into the jungle we are on a place called, that is the highest plateau in the world, and the biggest, the highest biggest, it is uh, it's called Suma Pass. That is a region, it is called a wetland, it is on a level of almost 3,000 meter elevation and it's the source of all the rivers. And in Varshana, we have one Yamuna River and the Radha Kunda, which comes directly out of the mountain. Here from the mountain under a tree manifests the Yamuna River, out of nowhere, in our farm, it's something very magic. I'm traveling around the world. I've only seen two places a little similar. Of course, if you would go through the Himalayas, if you go to Gomuk, where the glacier, the Ganga is coming out from the mouse, that's something like that, no? But it's because it's a glacier. So, glacier is full of water, then there is something coming out. But here, this is green and trees. It's just coming out of the earth. We call it the sanctuary. This is one of the sanctuaries. So the water sanctuary. The yoga planetarium, Varshan is not really very big. Haladar's uh, Govinda's Bauernhof is 17 hectares all together. In Varshana, we may have today seven hectares, seven, eight. So it's much smaller than Govinda's Bauernhof, but it is when the natives approached me for making a kiva there. That's a long story, but I just cut it short. They had no other place to put it and they had only three months to finish it because already natives had been invited from all Central, South, North and South America. So they asked me, can we do it in Varsala? I was in India, I wasn't even there. They wrote me a letter <laughs> because I knew some of them. I answered, if you don't bring meat, and don't bring drugs into Varshana, you can do there whatever you want. <laughs> so they said, thank you. So they were looking, where can we make a kiva? A kiva is a 13 meter diameter round hole in the ground, and two meter deep. 
So they were looking all over Varshan about Varshan has this and that construction, this. It's it's pretty much it's not a flat piece of land, it's full of full of mountain and sacred rocks. We have here, right here, we have the Muisca, the Muisca rocks. This is a Muisca century. These are the original tribes of the area, the Muisca sanctuary. And in here, we have something like uh, a park. It's a park called Krishna, the one who helps us to overcome all the obstacles. This is the art park. Then, so there was no there was no place to make that kiva except one here. That was the only place. Now kiva is a temple of the heart of Mother Earth. That means in the middle is a Agni Hotra Yajna. Here is the entrance of the sun. Sun is born in this direction. So we have an altar here, we have an altar here in all the four direction. We have an altar that means five altars of the five directions. Now we have finished this and we put the roof. It, it has, with that time they just made the hole. Now we made it a real a permanent sanctuary because they gave us the blessing to do so. <clears throat> because normally a, for, a kiva runs for four years, then it's moved to another place. Just this, I mean from here to here is merely six meters. So it's right on top. And this is the kirtan hall, and that's already finished. So therefore, when we were there in the kiva, we also were doing the night prayers, not in the kiva, but in here. And here was the, the famous ceremony, which is called Ambil. When they cook the Ambil, which is representative of a memory, like you have a memory stick, where you put everything. So all the prayers and all that, they were kept in the uh, umbil memory stick. And everybody got a portion of it to carry around, to keep the memory. This is a very interesting indigenous process. So that was cooked in here. And in here the declaration was made for the United Nations of the Spirit. United Nations of the Spirit. That manifested there. Here, by the way, we have a highway going on. And on this side, we have a bridge over the highway. And here is Govinda's restaurant where people arrive. And then we have a big bridge going over to go into Varshana. Here we just made a very major reception center. The, the Varshana ton had to adapt to many things because this, this is the Pan American Highway. That means here millions of cars going by all the time. Fortunately, we are quite up, so we can hear so much of it. But, <clears throat> so they can park here, or we have a big parking. Okay, we have a big parking now. This is somewhere out here. There is a big parking, which you can't see, because it's mountainous. And and then we have a very nice place called Bumi. In Bumi, 
there is the Timas cult. So this is also important for the for the indigenous ceremonies. We had five Timas cults. They are sweat lodges. In our Kiva in Chile, 5,000 people came this last year. Here in Colombia, it was not so famous, and only 600 people came. <coughs> but it is just gives you a sign. When we have our Janmastami festival, 1,000 people come here. Usually, run short does the cooking coordination there. There's Ron Shore, he knows his place very well. By the way, here is, here is another big union place, and here's the temple. Now, huge kitchen, the kitchen for everything, and here's Harijan Maharaj's Samadhi. Here's an entrance kiosk and people come from that side. I mean, it's not an accurate drawing, but just to give you an idea. Then the devotees, they have many residential facilities here. Here's an, here's an art, the center of art. There's art here. Varshana has a, an amazing, has an amazing distribution of <coughs> Many things, and still you you feel like you're in the jungle because you can't see most of it because uh, the terrain goes like that. So this place is an absolute, like an historical. It's like a Vedic museum, but because it's a temple, it's a living museum. Now it has the kiva. It is an indigenous. You could say this is the temple of the Americas, or the Abyayala, because America is the name of a Spanish guy, Americo Vipusio, who, who was the first one to go around the south tip of Chile. So they called this thing America because of this Spanish guy. Ridiculous. Uh, that place is called Abyayala, which is representing <coughs> But the, U, the United Nations of the Spirit represents Abhyayala and the whole world. It's not confined to Abhyayala. But this is, when you talk to the indigenous people, you have a different world opening, which most people, they don't know about, because we only know the football world, the, the world of the mafia, no, Colombia, Pablo Escobar, and things like that, you know. And well, if you talk to an indigenous person, he just opens another thing and he goes, Wah. and here you are with the universe. That's how they talk, that's how they feel, and that's how they act. So we are really, really, we are far away from, from that, unless we are prepared by Krishna consciousness for that. Because we are in Krishna consciousness, we also have a, a very beautiful dimension of looking at things. <coughs> we are not concerned with politics and status quo. Anyhow, this yoga planetarium plus this Kiva and the place where the United Nation of the Spirit was born, this has become... When I was there in the United Nation of the Spirit, the temple is far from finished. I felt we don't have to finish it anymore. The purpose of this temple has already been fulfilled. I really felt like this. I'm not exaggerating. I felt, ooh, oh, oh. I cannot believe it. The auspiciousness, the energy. So, nevertheless, we still work in it. On the contrary, we made the decision of making a Varshanaton and putting the artist there and the money there to put to finish a few of the guest houses to finish the restaurants to because we are all constructing organic systems so organic means maintenance high you don't 
make big buildings with uh, everything concrete and then on top uh, concrete roof. No, they, we, we try to stay in the very simple lifestyle. This is our style and we prefer it. Like now we are trying to make some houses in the trees uh, out there in the behind this area. Uh, yeah, so I can't paint it all here but you get an idea what's going on. And <coughs> for that we announced the Varshanaton. Because last not least here is the temple inside of their lordship. This is a very nice building with an inside patio, that's the temple. This is the temple of Sri Sri Guru Guranga, Radha Brajasla. This is the Mulamat of the Rinda mission. This is totally the Mulamat. So, therefore, this temple here, this huge truly, is going to be the future temple. The deity is going to be moved there. But because there's so much art, everything is mosaic, head carved by rocks. So here, for example, we also have a big art center. It's an art, art school. It's all something. Who of you has been to Varshana present? How many do we have here? Wow. A few, a few representatives. Huh? So, because we have every year we have the uh, we have the Janmashtami festival of Colombia here, and the devotees come from all over. <coughs> but today there are so many temples in other parts of Colombia. For them, it's also hard to come. It's a long tra travel, and the climate is also a little bit harsh for those who come from the very hot areas. But anyway, it's going on. So this is what the Varshanaton stands for. Finishing this, we have a few other. Uh, here in this area, we are planning. There's an incredible mountain and we are planning a guest house. Of course, everywhere this guest house, I don't know when we're going to finish it, but I put it on the list of the Varshanaton. And then uh, everywhere is agriculture. You know, all these fields are planted. So it's, it's not just... And of course, we have the children areas and so... Oh, I forgot. Here's our concert place. <laughs> right here. This is the, the big meeting hall concert place and behind that is a guest house. Here's another guest house. Pascalita's place. So so all yeah I mean to accommodate thousand people you need you need a lot of space, you know. This is a little bit as an idea what we need for Veda Slovena, no? And we have had projects where we are much more humble where we work with one one hectare, or like in Imlitala in Sweden, my God, this is such a small place. But because we have the sacred Radha Kunda and Govardhan in the behind, when you go to the sacred Radha Kunda and Govardhan, you feel just as mystical as going to Varshan. This is an amazing place there. So we are not in great need for externals. We can do like a funny thing was when when the natives went to New York for the UNESCO meeting of the tribes. So then after the all the tribe leaders had come, they said, now we give you a New York City tour. So they took all the native leaders uh, into the Empire State Building and the, the Anuradha told me she was the engine. And they said, now look, this is what we have accomplished. And they showed the Empire State Building. And the natives looked up. <laughs> they started laughing. <laughs> huh? So the leader said, why are you laughing? They said, we are 
living with the greatest of the creation's uh, <coughs> mountains, the sacred apples. You just put a few blocks of cement on top of each other, you think you made a great accomplishment. <laughs> Our temples are in the caves of the, of, of the incredible glaciers and everything, you know. <laughs> you can walk over it days and days and days, you know. A, a totally different dimension, no? So a little bit, we, we feel like that. If you see the surrounding here, the mountains of the Suma Pass, blows your mind. You can get lost there. It is uh, the one. It, it is the highest, the, the biggest high plateau in the world, the Suma Pass, and the the caves. We have 22 caves. The arts, everything together, makes it. Uh, now the place has been declared as a national national architecture. Heritage. Heritage. Natural. And architectural heritage, yes. Okay, so this is what is going on and what we are looking at now because there's so much artwork going into all these things, therefore it is very delayed. We don't really know when is the big opening. Uh, I, will, I will make a, a calculation and we need also money because uh, using nice, uh, very nice materials, so it's also expensive to make. But yes, when we will bring the deity here, and so it's not yet uh, focused. But maybe within two, three years. It's, it depends also how many people will get involved. No, because we have simultaneously have so many other projects all over the world. So. They are not less important, please give me the pen. They are not less important, but of course Mulamat is Mulamat, and we have a great liking for this place. Every time I'm leaving there, I wonder, will you allow me, my lord, to come back again? You know, it's a world trip between every time I go there is uh, lies the world. So I, I ask Kurangarada Brajaswara, Will, me, will you allow me to come back? And so far they did allow it, so I was able to come every year for the last 30, 33, 34 years. Every year I'm there for, for Janmastami, and uh, 